watching AYV Television. Good evening. This is Primetime News on AYV Television and Radio. I am Fabian Swil Randall. Let's start with the headlines. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Julde Jalo says government of Sierra Leone is focusing on agriculture on two fronts. We decided that we are going to focus on agriculture essentially along two axes. One is to increase production so that at least food self-sufficiency. Second is to move the agricultural sector from a social infrastructure to a productive sector. Landowner at Duazak Junction accuses Ministry of Lands for taking her property. Engagement me and Ministry Law get back concerning this particular property. They're not telling me say that they can't give us They're not telling me say that they can't take her. They're not giving me no instruction. Hello. They just come to the land. They say, Minister say, and the government get her. And Bathos Village lights up after 204 years. Now for the full news with Phibian Swidrandul. The Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Mohamed Julde Jalo, has said the government of Sierra Leone is focusing on agriculture on two fronts, which are increased production and moving the sector from a social infrastructure to a quality produ productive one. He made this statement in his office during a courtesy call made by Michael Arion, Executive Director of the International Cocoa Organization, who is in the country to assess the cocoa sector in Sierra Leone. Albert George Sharif has more. Over the past two years, the International Cocoa Organization has been impressed by the strides Sierra Leone's cocoa sector has been making, especially in improving the quality of its cocoa beans. Sierra Leone won an International Quality Cocoa Award in 2019 as one of the best 50 quality cocoa exporting countries. In June 2020, the EU through the Agriculture Market Briefs ranked Sierra Leone third in the world and first in Africa in the export of organic cocoa to the European market. Making a statement during the courtesy call in his office by Michel Arion, Executive Director of the International Cocoa Organization, the Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Mohamed Julde Jalo, said one of the priorities of government is to boost the agricultural sector in terms of productivity and quality. And we decided that we are going to focus on agriculture essentially along two axes. One is to increase production so that at least full self-sufficiency. Second is to move the agricultural sector from a social infrastructure to a productive sector, so that this is a sector that is not only there to feed ourselves and become, but it's a sector that the country can make money out of it. Michel Erion, executive director of the International Cocoa Organization, is the first high-profile diplomat that has visited Sierra Leone since the country recorded the first coronavirus case. In his remarks during the visit to the vice president of the Republic of Sierra Leone, he said his coming to Sierra Leone is to evaluate the cocoa sector and advise stakeholders in the sector ahead of the Salon de Chocolate competition slated for January 2021. I fully support the idea of also developing the production in Sierra Leone provided it's high quality, you see? So, because if you contribute to the excess of bulk, uh, you will not compete with Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, of course. Mm -hmm. But you can compete with Madagascar, you can compete with other fine flavor or high quality cocoa. Dr. James Vibi is the executive chairman of the Produce Monitoring Board and host of the International Cocoa Organization team in Sierra Leone. He said the ICCO is very supportive of the Produce Monitoring Board. We, as a sector, see it that even with the quality, if we don't have production, it's teeming too little to the economic diversification of His Excellency President Malawi. So it is on this slide we have a series of uh, proposals out there which has attracted the ICCO um, to increase our volume to 50,000 in the next three years. The International Cocoa Organization is the global governing body for cocoa. 
Its membership is composed of both cocoa producing and cocoa consuming countries. Sierra Leone, through the Produce Monitoring Board, is currently a member of the International Cocoa Agreements Review Committee for the first time. Albert George Sheriff, AYV News Twitter. Now, porous borders, substandard medicine and cosmetics, coupled with drug peddling, are challenges making it difficult for citizens to maintain healthy life. This is according to James Peter Kome, the registrar at the pharmacy board, Sierra Leone. He made this revelation and more to AYV's Bokari Matia on strides the board has taken to curb drug peddling. The pharmacy board of Sierra Leone was established through an act of parliament to achieve the highest practical standards of the practice of pharmacy by professionals. The board was also established to ensure safety, efficacy and quality of all drugs, medical devices, cosmetics and nutritional sold or used to ensure the protection of public health. All this is done through the establishment of the Quality Control Laboratory. Well, this laboratory has been in existence from 2005. That it really became functional with support from ADB that we had this laboratory set up. After we start moving from higher heights and there have been a lot of intervention, the only thing for now that has been the hold up because every laboratory that exists in the world has to be what we refer to as ISO certification. Up to now, we have only acquired the ISO 17025 yet, which is meant for the lab. But notwithstanding that, uh, we have already started the, the basics that have been done because for now, pharmacy board has been ISO certified, ISO 9001, 2015. And we are proud to say that we are the only government institution in this country that is now ISO certified. Speaking on the ever growing concerns of drug peddling and counterfeit drugs and cosmetics, the registrar had this to say It's not really easy for you to man the borders of this country. Because when we talk about Konoelo, it has more than 50 entry points. And that alone, you know, police with all their mind, that has been a problem, let alone you know, pharmacy board. But what we have done as a regulatory body, officially, we, are only, we have only allowed two ports of entry. Legally, that is the Queen Elizabeth II Key and uh, uh, Lunga International Airport. The airport. Uh, we are also in negotiation with uh, uh, NRA. They have already provided space for us at Baramuya, for us to have an office there so that we can at least ensure that whatever product comes to this country. But that's the reason why we are saying the people that say the consumer have to help us for us to achieve. Because counterfeit is a real menace, not only in Sierra Leone, all over the world. I will tell you for free, what we have done is why we are really concerned, always to tell our importers, whatever product you bring into this country, when they get expired, come to pharmacy board, so that technically we can destroy them. When you leave them in the open, these scavengers are going to have it, they start selling it to the public. We have seen even products with peddlers where they have extended expiry dates. And please, when we leave here, I'm going to inform my guys to get some of the speakers because it has become a business that people go around. Advertising, advertising is even wrong. Those is why these days I think there was an article sent by IMC to all of you that nobody should advertise any pharmaceutical without approval of pharmacy board. According to James Peter Kome, citizens should always bring to the knowledge of the pharmacy board whenever they have concerns with drugs and cosmetics and help make Sierra Leone healthy. Bokari Matia, AYV News, Frita. A landowner at Dwozak Junction, Fatimata Hafner, has accused the Ministry of Lands for taking some portions of her property. According to Madam Hafner, she is not aware of any discussion leading to the demolition of some of her structures. According to the Minister of Lands, Dennis Sandy, in a text message, the land in question is a state land and Madam Hafner has long ago been compensated for the land during the hillside bypass road construction process. Ransford Lubimetzka has more. According to Mrs. Hafner, she has no business with the ministry because she has a legal document and will fight for the property her husband left for her. She added that she was never consulted nor informed that this particular process is going to be held in her land. On the court. The courts are then injunction papers. They don't give them two injunctions, then they refuse and continue for doing that. So I'm not getting no business with the ministry. I have my legal documents, I get for all my legal documents and tell and go to them for this property. Then say me take past certain government give me and I lie. I get all the road authority paper. If I road authority line, can't take from the property. When they get chance to can do all the things they need to see. You see, they don't engage me, they don't inform me, they don't give me nothing. Yes, sir. I don't know when they service it. 
I don't England where they survey. I don't even know nothing. Yes, so we not be done to get any engagement. One engagement me and Minister not get back concerning this particular property. They're not telling me say that they can't give us They're not telling me say that they can't take her. They're not giving no instruction. Hello. They just come to the land. They say, Minister say, and the government get her. One of the supervisors from the Ministry of Lands revealed that a thorough survey was done by the Ministry to ascertain the property and the tenant that was living on a structure in the land was also compensated. Well, like, when Minister of Lands began the market, then they became under the we own place, you understand? Then, of course, the baking there under. So we take a line, a line. So the tenants who have been there and uh, we get in consent. They say, okay, they say, well, they go discuss with the mummy. Structure. The structure now, mummy, I think they get the structure. But the structure. We have been with them after on a little bit because of the man who have said that. We, we get several, we don't get several discussion with me. We both tend to get several discussion with the mummy inside the place. Now, hey, Mr. Sir, Dr. Sandy, you say, what do you say? You know, in the tongue. Wake up, Dr. Sandy, say, once here in our office. So let go see, let go, let go show on the paper. Because yeah, officially for Ministry of Lands and they can survey, do the survey, everything. We not just come and, and, and just start work like that. We go through a legal process and an officer any issue there. When AYV reached the Minister of Lands on his response in a text message, Minister revealed that the land does not belong to her as it is a state land. The portion she is claiming, according to Dr. Dennis Sandy, had long ago been compensated for by the Sierra Leone Roads Authority during the hillside bypass road construction. It also revealed that the money that was compensated for was received by her, and that's all he can say. Lands for Lubimetska, AYV News in Freetown to achieve the energy sustainable goals in the country. The Ministry of Energy has installed 1,000 KVA transformers in Bathurst Village, Western Area. Bathurst Village has been 204 years without light and has hampered businesses and livelihoods in the village. Now, according to the Minister of Energy, Alhaji Kanjasisi, the move by the ministry is in line with the government's agenda in building human capacity development. Mohamed Bakal Kamara has more. This is Battles Village in the western area. This village hosts over thousands of inhabitants, many of whom are farmers, business people, among others. Battles Village was cut off from the country's national power grid for over 204 years, making life difficult for residents in terms of business or for personal use. With this 1,000 kV transformer in the village, life is believed to be improved. Well, uh... We are a responsive ministry and the government, we got a request from them. And the case they presented to us was so strong and compelling, I could not say no. I cannot imagine that battles very, very close to Freetown, in fact in the western area, would have been without electricity for 204 years. I can make excuses for other towns away from the western area, but not battles. It's just too close to be true that it's 204 years without electricity. There are about 3,000 customers and electricity, you will imagine. The fact that we have brought such a huge facility, this big transformer, the customers are going to increase rapidly, definitely. So the minimum is going to, at the beginning, is going to benefit at least 3,000 people. Oh yes, it can light up. It's far in excess of what uh, Battles Village requires. And uh, so we did it on purpose so that other communities, neighboring communities, can be added on. Excitement on the faces of residents in Battles Village. Some of them registered their appreciation to the ministry for bringing light to the settlement. Four years, not of 204 days, not of 204 months, for making that after 204 years, Battles kept it on. Now, now Battles get light. We tell what Small community, but Battles come big. But who want to get solar? But you know they work, you know do. That's all that they not do. People they get appliances, they're not able for use them. People they get their hosts, they're not able to get light. So for what you don't happen, so we tell God thank you. I want to see where this is. Papa, you must not be correct. A colonial town like Battles was seen only 204 years 
collecting death light? Oh my God! I want to say, this government doesn't do anything great in this particular case. We see people uh, get an eye on this afternoon. Some from Bridget, Leicester, Gloucester, Charlotte. They come for support this community because they're realizing this is a great achievement. Battles is well known for its vast land, which is a potential area for development. The East Transformer will ease many of the challenges residents are faced within the village. For AYV Primetime News, I am Mohamed Baka Kamara. Now, as women continue to advocate for at least 30% representation in center stage politics in Sierra Leone, the 50-50 women's group, in partnership with Search for Common Ground, have dialogued with all registered political parties. The discourse is in view of political parties to create enabling spaces for women to actively participate in politics and take vital leadership positions in their political parties. Salifu Cheno Kamara reports. Beyond politics of men, empowering women to be effective political actors in Sierra Leone is a three-year European Union-funded project implemented in Cambia, Kenema, and Tonkolili districts by 5050 Group and Search for Common Ground. Founder and global president for the 5050 Group, Dr. Nimata Majeks Walker, says, For over five decades, men have dominated the political landscape with limited contribution of women. In the past, women have been relegated to the backseat. Women have not been given the importance they deserve. Um, political parties don't recognize that women are supposed to lead. They prefer to see women wearing ashobis. And we are today saying, gone are the days when women were, were there merely to cook and dance ashobis for political parties. Women should be in front. Women should not be marginalized. We don't just want to see women in women's wings. Chairman and leader for the National Unity and Reconciliation Party, Dr. Jonathan Sandy said, political parties must prioritize the issue of women, adding that it is only when men and women work as equal partners can advancement of the nation be guaranteed. We are registered on the 20th of December 2017, one week to the coming nomination process. Can you imagine we manage to move quickly? Among all the nominees we had, we managed, we have, we have managed to have 35% to 40% of women. But at the moment, as I said, for them to campaign to meet the requirement, because it's about political ideology and bringing it on board. But imagine many of them are useful, like you saw today, one of them who presented today for my party is from IPAM. The 50-50 group stated that as a result of marginalization of women in mainstream political positions, the 16% representation of women in parliament in 2012 dropped to 12.6% in 2018. But for women to take their place in governance, they must not underrate or downplay the issue of solidarity among themselves. A lot of women don't know whether they hear that we are in the majority, we are in the majority, but they can't appreciate that. So. Um, Programs like this really bring it home to us women that we cannot sit and take it for granted that we want more representation, we want more um, parliamentarians to be female, we want more ministers to be female. It's not going to happen by osmosis. It won't happen by diffusion. It has to happen with us working hard. Some of the political parties signed the 5050 Group communique as a symbol of commitment to improving opportunities for women's participation in higher political positions, while few had to wait for approval. With support from Osiwa, Advocate Sierra Leone has embarked on providing COVID preventive supplies to girls and women in detentions across the country. According to the program manager of Advocate, Suna Kumba Toka, the supply also caters for basic needs of female detainees to ensure that they remain safe in detention while awaiting trials. Ronald Jomorove has more. Advocate Sierra Leone is an organization dedicated towards promoting human rights, especially women that come in contact with the law. The institution is not only concerned with helping female detainees access justice, but also ensure their rights are protected while in detention. To achieve this, the organization is distributing COVID-19 prevention kits 
to ensure the Tinis are protected. Organization, we are keen about women accessing justice because we want to help them protect their human rights. So what we do, we usually support them in the process of accessing justice, like we provide legal aid support for them while in detention, and if their cases are charged to court, we help some of these women with legal representation. We also have our social workers who also provide the social aspect of their work because sometimes they are arrested, they are not prepared. When they come to the police stations, there are several needs that must be met which are not available. So we provide them with clothing, we provide them with dry ration like dairy milk, sugar, we provide them with toiletries and also we help them throughout the process so that they can have confidence in the law while they are accessing justice. The Waterloo Police Divisional Headquarter is one of the beneficiaries of the supply. The station currently has 23 male detainees and one female for alleged murder. Receiving the supplies, the support officer at the station commended advocate, noting they are the first to do such. This donation for me is the first that we have received so far for suspect and we very much appreciate this donation for an organization in Twitter to come here considering the distance for them to come and make this sort of donation. We are very much appreciative of that. We usually get supplies from our regional offices. They send us those of Veronica companies and the hand sanitizer and the soap. Among the items presented included hand sanitizers, mattresses, toiletries, and dry food ration. Ronald Jumovia, AYV News, Freetown. The Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Laman Swari, has disclosed that the Sierra Leone Cable Limited is not for sale, but rather it is necessary to reform and inject a private sector business in it. He was speaking during a press conference regarding the unbuilding of the national fiber optic asset compromising, uh, well, comprising the um, submarine cable and the national terrestrial backbone manned by SALCAP. Here's more on that story compiled by Mohamed Lamin Banya and read by Ransford Lubimetzger. SALCAB is the East Submarine Cable Landing Party in Sierra Leone, responsible for the operation and commercialization of wholesale international services on the East Submarine Cable, as well as providing national wholesale services via a terrestrial fiber network. Remember, we landed East Cable here um, using a, 20, a, a $30 million loan. $25 million paid directly to the ACE Consortium for our participation, the other $5 billion for administrative and infrastructural commitments. That was done. Several years down the line, we have done reviews, and we, they, are, they are very, very legitimate and palpable concerns about the efficacy of this investment and the need to change direction. Talks about SALCAP's future has come to the spotlight following a report last week that the entity that regulates internet access in the country, among others, has been sold. What we intend to do by cabinet conclusion is to ensure that we inject a private sector model, business model, into the operations of SALCA. A, so that at least we are able to pay uh, for our, our loan liabilities. B, we are able to support e-governance. See, we are able to realize and enjoy efficiency gains as a country, not us. But this is change management. Um, the available literature on change management is that there can be resistance to change. Mohamed Raman Suare further disclosed that aside from reforming SALCAB, the ministry is also reforming other sectors it is regulating. Thanks for Dubi Metzga, AYV News in Freetown. The Santigi Idris Akagbo Foundation has today presented some relief items that are worth over 7 million yuns to flood victims at Porti Community in Freetown. The relief items, according to the foundation's program manager, Ibrahim Thula, is part of the foundation's strides to cushion the effect of the numerous challenges posed by the heavy downpour on the flood victims. Tamba Stephen Komba has more.
The Santigi Idrisa Kago Foundation, according to the foundation's program manager, is a charitable organization that is geared towards supporting youth, women, children, and persons in their need. The donation to the flood victims, he said, is in fulfillment of the foundation's mandate. We, our responsibility is to complement the effort of government. Government will come halfway and we will come halfway. And we know by that we will ensure that we provide them what they need or what they desire. Satisfaction, fulfillment knowing that our people are safe, knowing that our people are relieved, knowing that our people are stress-free or eventually they are relocated. To encourage them, I want to inspire them, I want to motivate them to help, no matter the amount. It will be it, greater be it. Come and help whatever way it will create a great impact and indelible footprint for the lives of these people. On behalf of the beneficiaries, Maria Tubangura expressed thanks and appreciation to Santigi Idris Akabo Foundation for the gesture, adding that the need for accommodation cannot be overemphasized, as they have been noticed to vacate the classrooms they are currently occupying at the SLMB Primary School in Poti before schools reopen. They beg, tell to the government, do you have a for location for no good day? We get a look at no side for day. Let us school the carpet. We are not going to sleep. Because when we do the gut, we start to go. Then I know maybe family and now scatter. Because we don't live maybe family them. The people that we don't left in the house, we don't live for the past time of year. I do with my brothers and sisters them. We all get the same community. So by this hour, I'm not going to say that cats are weak. Yeah. Councillor Fatmata Cecilia Williams buttressed the statement made by Maria Tubangura, stating that government and well meaning Sierra Leoneans should step in to secure accommodation for the victims. The people there are not sitting there, but don't bring the camera to the school there for open refusal. Who's going to have me for go care for the people there? Now, the sorry for question that one day. As a councillor, who said now what for go care the people there? Let them go there because they were, they don't need for scatter it to. We want for where they go. Then they in one place so that they're not out for friendly. If they come, they say, Well, they be there. They don't come up from me under now, and I under and I did day. But if you scatter them, look how sorry for them. Then they are this. Tamba, Stephen Komba, AYV News in Freetown. Now, Institute for Legal Research and Advocacy for Justice, in partnership with the Law Society Frabe College, held a moot court competition for students to have foster hands on procedures in the rules of evidence, building the advocacy skills and develop study abilities to argue and defend matters in the court of law with other lawyers and judges. Mohamed Wuiba, president of Law Society, said they have requested to the administration that court system should be included in their studies. Our reporter Sheko Mohamed Sila has more. Mood court is a secular activity at many law schools where participants take part in stimulated court arbitration proceedings that usually involve drafting memorials or memorandum and participating in oral argument. Mohamed Ruiba, President of Law Society, says law is a practical course and this competition will help students enhance research skills. It goes up to the administration through the office of the dean to have mooting as a curricular activity because in everywhere in the world, in every other law faculties across the globe, moot competition or mooting itself is not an extra curricular activity, it's a curricular activity. So I have proposed to the administration through the Office of the Dean of the Faculty to ensure that we have mooting as an integral component of our curriculum. Essentially when students are in year two, they are introduced to the rules of procedures, they are introduced to the rules of evidence. Besita Michael, the governing officer for Institute for Legal Research and Advocacy for Justice, said they intend to extend the competition to other law schools to have the opportunity to moot court system. From consistency. But we're hoping that uh, through Enraj, we will uh, continue with the process. We, in fact, uh, intend uh, not only to continue with it, but to continue with it in the same trend um, by honoring Sierra Leoneans that have impacted our legal system. And uh, we also uh, <coughs> intend to extend it to other universities. Some of the students express thanks to the organizers for bringing the moot court system to them. It will give them, let me say, uh, an encouragement in executing whatever task is given to them you know, in any public forum. Because reading law is one thing, practicing it is another. 
you might have read it, you might know everything, but then you might not know the approach to take when you're in an actual cut room. But then if you're used to coming to mood cut competitions, or you're used to partaking in these competitions, then you know what it's like or what judges expect when you go to a cut room. The case and sites are selected beforehand and students are time to prepare for the ensuring trial. Sheikh Mohammed Sile, AYV News. Cherry Education Commission has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Sierra Leone Police. The MOU is aimed at curbing the increase in tertiary institutions established in the country without the accreditation of the Commission. Joseph Johnson has more. The memorandum of understanding aims at preventing the influx of illegal tertiary institutions in the country. The chairman of the Commission, Professor Aliajin Al Ghali says they are sometimes faced with confrontations whenever they approach some of these institutions. The signing from the one of understanding. Now one of our mandates is to regulate and monitor tertiary education institutions in this country. Over the years, a number of institutions have sprung up which are not legal. And we've always had difficulties trying to get legality or to get them to conform. Because of that, we as a commission thought it fit to engage to engage the Sierra Leone police force to assist us whenever we get into some difficulties in getting people to conform. In fact, in the recent times, we've noticed that the number of institutions that are springing up all over the place is of the increase. Many of them, unless we chase them, they do not come forward to get themselves registered and accredited. Even when we do chase them, there are times when we encounter difficulties with reluctance to comply. In his address, the Inspector General of Sierra Leone Police, Ambu Sovola, says the move is laudable and he assured the Commission of their support. There have been educational malpractices from the lower level, the middle level, and the higher level. So, with this memorandum, making a very good thing that the law enforcers and the tertiary education commission will serve as a checkmate for those who have been involved in such practices. Because such practices have become a norm, that's why fake institutions have been created. With this MOU, the Commission's role will be easy, especially in dealing with illegal tertiary institutions in the country. Joseph Johnson, AYV News, Freetown. This is Primetime News. We'll be back with more news after this break. AYV is your home of credible, factual and balanced news coverage. We pride ourselves as the nation's most trusted news source. Because of this, our brand is likely to be used to spread fake news. To verify our stories, please check our various social media pages, visit our website on www.ayvnews.com or send us an email to info at ayvnews.com. Welcome back. You're still tuned to Primetime News on AYV Television and Radio. I am Fibian Swill Randall. Now, the Catholic community under the auspices of the University of McKinney has bid farewell to Sister Mary Paul Sweeney, who has lived and worked in Sierra Leone for 48 years. 
As a reverend sister with passion in special needs education, she established the first primary and secondary schools in the northern region for hearing impaired children. Abbas Sisi reports from Makini. Tamegi Sweeney came to Sierra Leone in the early 70s and 48 years in the country, her work centers on special needs education, especially in Makini and other parts in the north. In a special send-off party organized for her, speaker after speaker emphasizes on the blueprint Sister Paul has inscribed in the hearts and minds of many, especially the physically challenged. Professor Joseph Touré, Vice Chancellor of University of McKinney, was among a host of personalities present during the farewell party. There is no greater examples, no better examples than to learn from people who have lived with God. You see, Sister Mary Ward Sweeney, she has been with us for 48 years in this country, establishing what is called special needs education. Those with hearing and hearing. She's worked for us for 48 years in this country. In a career that spans for over four decades, Sister Mary Paul Sweeney established St. Joseph's Primary and Secondary Schools for Hearing Impaired and also set up the Institute for Inclusive and Special Needs Education at the University of McKinney. In a statement, Sister Mary Sweeney says her passion into special needs education stems from her family background in Ireland. The things that I ever did here or in school or wherever I don't think that I can ever take that it was because I did. Because from my family, they were involved with the hearing impaired. Children, my uncle was a priest, and he brought the children from different parts of Ireland. And when they needed a job, they were brought to uh, Dumbo, where I came from. And then they often became very important people in our area. And Though she has retired, but her legacies continue to be visible in the country. Several awards and gifts were presented to her as a form of recognition for her remarkable services for 48 years in Sierra Leone. Abba Sisi, AYV News, McKinney. And finally in sports, President of Sierra Leone Football Association, Aisha Yuanzin, has said the situation of Sierra Leone football over the years as leader is based on fighting the status quo in terms of football governance, compliance and bringing about change in the system. Madam Yuanzin made this disclosure on this year's second edition of Africa Women's Sports Summit, held in Ghana via Zoom. Our sports reporter, Ransford McLean, followed the conversation and now reports. The second edition of this year's Africa Women's Sports Summit saw various women in sports leadership roles as a way to connect their vast experiences in the space. Delivering a statement during the first session, Aisha Johansson, president of the Sierra Leone Football Association, spoke on her background, adding that her story is basically fighting the status quo in the Sierra Leone Football Association in terms of sports governance and compliance and to bring about change. She emphasized that the change does not necessarily mean everyone will be subscribed to that. It's about um, challenging and bringing about change. I was elected um, the first female FA president in my country, which was a really historic uh, moment. And I think um, perhaps the first um, reality check that I had uh, very early um, in terms of governance was um, uh, the, the realization that um, this, this word called change um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, everybody will subscribe to that change. And what, what do I mean by that? I mean that not everybody that elected or supported you or seemingly elected or supported you um, understands the meaning of real change. And um, I soon very quickly learned that there was a, a disconnect between real um, between change for all and change for some. And uh, perhaps that is where the first signs of a crisis um, um, hit me, uh, as it were, because um, you know, when you start to have cracks from within, 
your own core or your own stable, as it were, that is a very precarious position to find yourself in as a leader because it really hits at um, the very foundation of um, your base, uh, as it were. So, so yes, and um, the story goes on and on and on. FIFA Secretary General Fatma Samoa, one of the panelists says, since being appointed to serve in the early stage, everything she took up was questionable, but that does not push her back to serve up to this moment. However, I had seen life and their situation. So being gossiped and speculated about didn't bother me too much. I had bigger things to think about, like turning FIFA around and making it a more transparent and accountable institution. And I'm proud to say that this is what we have done. The theme for this year's Africa Women's Sports Summit looks at shifting mindset is important for everything that leadership requires of front runners in Africa's dynamic sports scene. Lance for McLean, AYV Sports, Freetown. Well, that's it for Primetime News tonight. Send us feedback via email to info at ayvnews.com. You can also connect with us online at www.ayvnews.com or follow us on Twitter. Our handle is AYV Sierra Leone. I am Fibian Swil Randall. Thanks for watching and listening. Have a good night. Stay safe. Cheers. watching AYV television